Okay, super. Thanks so much. Okay, Diana, thank you. And thank you all for coming out and joining us. And I think I have to stand over here to be seen on the camera. Is that correct? Okay. So, um, Diana, who works alongside Mandy Shantini, are the co founders for Urban Polling Inc., which is based in Canada. And Diana has a fitness, a wellness, and a, an extensive marketing background. And her cohort, Mandy, is one of the leading experts <laughs> on Nordic walking slash walking sticks and is also um, an OT. So they both bring a lot of experience to the development of their polls. And so Diana is going to share with us what is urban polling, but most, more specifically, what are the activator polls? So Diana... Welcome, welcome, and I will be quiet so you can take over. Okay, thank you so much. Um, could you give me a wave just to let me know that this is coming through okay? Yes, you can, you're, you're hearing me okay? All right, we're good then. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't, don't talk. Don't talk. Um, okay, super. So thank you again um, for having me. It's, I always say technology is wonderful until it's not. <laughs> so it's a good thing we were able to iron all of this out. And I'm just really happy to be here um, with you this Friday afternoon. Um, as she said, my name is Deanna Oliver, and I'm one of the owners of Urban Polling. And um, I always like to start off because, you know, our company is, was founded by Mandy as an OT and gerontologist. So it's nice to kind of kick things off and have you meet Mandy. This is just a very short video, but it gives a bit of perspective on um, what we're about and, and what our company stands for. So I'm just gonna play this. And again, if you could wave at me, I'm hoping that the sound will come through for the video. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll obviously just skip the video. So you let me know. Hi, my name is Mandy Shintani. I'm an occupational therapist and gerontologist by background from Urban Polling. I'm excited to introduce the evidence-based activator polls, which were designed to improve the treatment outcomes for your clients' core strength, posture, balance, while normalizing all aspects of gait in terms of stride length, gait speed, and arm swing. It's also an effective alternative to canes, which promotes movement of both arms and weight bearing on the affected leg for stroke rehab. It may also be an option to reduce or delay the use of walkers to prevent kyphotic posture, promote normal arm swing, improve gait speed and core strengthening. It's an alternative to crutches, which can be awkward for some of our clients to use while promoting off -leveling on the hip and knee joints. Let's hear a testimonial from Dr. Jack Taunton, our Chief Medical Officer for the 2010 Olympics and who also underwent seven spinal surgeries. Uh, my name is Dr. Jack Taunton. I'm a former uh, international marathoner. Uh, I'm in a body brace. I've lost control of my right leg. Uh, but with poles, I can now walk three and on the weekends, four hours a day. If I was to do this with a walker being bent over, I'm in a body brace to keep me upright. Uh, uh, that doesn't make sense. And a cane is the same thing. This, I'm upright and that uh, I can power. Activator pulls. So that was just a very quick video and just wanted to see, um, have you meet, like I said, Mandy and have a broader understanding of um, what our company really does. So as we talked about, we're gonna learn a little bit more about what urban polling, also known as Nordic walking is. Talk about some of the benefits and also the research behind it. And there's quite a bit as it relates to that, our polls and program. And then at the end, um, certainly I will mute myself and then you know we'll just 
play a game back and forth of mute, unmute as we go through a Q&A session. So just starting off with a quote, um, you know, this was something from one of our customers and she said, these polls are great and great aid to balance. If you have knee or back issues, easy to use and really get your heart pumping. I highly recommend them. It's always nice to hear from users. So what is urban polling, also known as Nordic walking? At the end of the day, um, very simply, this is combining specialized polls with walking. That's, that's what Nordic walking is. If any of you have cross country skied before, um, I'm not sure if there's you know, a show of hands there of anybody that's cross country skied, um, but certainly I, I imagine a few of you have, it's very similar. And if you have cross country skied, like I did this past winter with my daughter and, and another um, mother and her daughter, and I was terrible at it to be frank with you. But um, what I learned very quickly is um, how cardiovascularly engaging it truly was. And that's what Nordic walking does. So it certainly helps to get your heart rate up. Um, but the nice thing about it, and this is the part that most people don't realize, is that it is a combination of aerobic and anaerobic activity. So you still get that heart pumping benefit as you would with other, other cardiovascular activities, but you're also getting resistance. And the resistance comes from pushing through the ledge of the handle, and it's that downward pressure that's activating more muscles. And we talk about that when you think about it, if you look at this gentleman here on the screen, this, this image, all of those muscles highlighted in blue are the ones that are actively engaging when you're walking without poles, right? So all the muscles, basically everything from our waist down is actively engaging when we're walking. So that's about 40% of the body's muscles. When we add the poles, now we have our core muscles, and all of our upper body muscles. So the delts, the pecs, the forearms, everything through our arms, everything. It's nearly 90% of the body's muscles that are actively engaging when you add the poles. That's pretty phenomenal. And because of this, because you have so many more muscles working as you are walking, you're burning at minimum 20% more calories up to 46%, depending on how fast you go. So that's pretty fantastic. And as we know, there's so many benefits to that. Um, even if you think about diabetes, you know, glucose is absorbed in an exercising muscle. So when you have 90% of your body's muscles exercising, that means that the glucose is being taken up in 90% of your body simultaneously. That's pretty incredible. The other key piece that people don't realize because they don't understand that Nordic walking is as much about cardiovascular as it is about resistance training is that it helps to strengthen your core. So the average person when they walk a mile can go about 1800 steps. For every foot plant, there is a pole plant, which means you're getting about 1800 abdominal contractions per mile. Also about 900 lat contractions, 900 shoulder contractions. So you can imagine how much is happening. And you can see there that handle with the ledge. It's all through pushing through that, that you're going to be able to activate very easily, very simply with a nice loose grip, all of those muscles. And certainly, you know, your team there could explain this likely even better than I can, but the importance of maintaining core, core strength. So through the abdominals, through the lat muscles, whatever is sort of surrounding those muscles surrounding your waist um, is crucial because that is the center of balance. It's our posture. It's what's helping us to keep upright as opposed to being kyphotic. It's extremely, extremely important. And so that's why whether you're sitting and just pushing into the handles or standing or actually walking with the poles, that benefit is significant. And that's certainly that importance of core strength increases as we get older. The World Confederation of Physical Therapy does recommend Nordic walking. And in fact, they say a minimum of two uh, strength and balance exercises per week, two days per week or more to improve function and prevent injury. And they cite Nordic walking as one of the recommended activities. So while this concept may still be fairly new to the US market, um, it's been around for years and years and years, originating out of the Scandinavian countries. 
Um, certainly many, many people in Europe do this and now in North America as well, which is pretty fantastic. Another great quote, as we talk about strength and balance, they allow me to walk with stability and confidence. That is, as, as you well know, that is so incredibly important because when we start feeling unstable on our feet and unsure of ourselves, um, that's when we tend to reduce and limit our movement. And once we start doing that, it's a slippery slope. So the more that we can maintain upright, symmetrical posture, ambulation, through again, having that feeling of stability and confidence, the better that we are. The activators, you know, in particular, are being recommended as an effective alternative to canes or to reduce or delay the use of walkers naturally upon approval of a health and wellness professional. And at the end of the day, you can see here very clearly in the photos that, you know, the gentleman on the left is, is on a walker and certainly there is a time and a place for everything, um, but his posture is not ideal. You know, he's, he's quite hunched over. And then we have the lovely Brad Pitt who, you know, is sporting the cane. And you can see that again, his posture is sort of tilted to one side. Whereas when you're using the poles, it's that downward pressure that's helping to keep you upright. And so that is why, you know, again, um, they are being recommended more and more uh, in this capacity. In this video you saw, sorry, did somebody just say something? My apologies. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, you saw this video previously, let me just go back, but I'll just show it again because it really highlights you know, the difference. And obviously if you're already using a walker, um, this transition would be something that you would need to do um, with someone guiding you. Um, so it, it would never be just, I'm gonna pick up the poles and go. You would want to work with your team there, your therapists and your, um, your fitness professionals to be able to support that transition if, it, if you are a candidate to have that happen. Now, this is a case study actually that was done out of a university here, um, out of actually Montreal. And it's looked at an individual who was walking without poles, which is what you're about to see. And you'll be able to see the way that this individual walks and the cadence that they have versus when they use the poles. So let me just play this for you here. So you can see there um, quite a more challenged gait pattern, um, overextension of the arms, swinging back and forth, um, very sort of limited steps because she's trying to keep her balance as much as possible, okay, versus the same individual when she is using the poles. You can see immediately the arm swing is much more controlled. You can see that, look how much the steps have widened because the whole thing is, is that when we start to limit our steps or start to shuffle, um, that, is, that puts us at a higher risk of falls. The more that we can extend our stride, the better that we are. And that's essentially what this study showed is that there were numerous benefits to adding the activator poles to her walk. Uh, gait speed improved by about 37%. Step length, which was the part that I was speaking about just now, reducing shuffling, so it increased by about 62%. Stride width, so not as much um, width when she was walking, was able to come down. Gait variability improved and cadence also uh, decrease, which is exactly what we want to see. And all those things are indicators for falls. This here is a quote. I don't know how many of you have heard of Larry Gifford. Um, he has Parkinson's himself, and he is the host of a podcast called When Life Gives You Parkinson's. He also blogs and is a podcaster for the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which I'm sure you're, you're very familiar with. And he said, these activator poles should be called confidence poles. I love them. 
They give me a sense of balance and security, and I have the confidence to go into an airport, go for a hike or a long walk with my family. I can say yes. And at the end of the day, you know, there's so much research on this. In actuality, there are over 300 published studies on the benefits of this form of um, fitness and rehabilitation. And sorry, for some reason, the screen is jumping. My apologies. Um, there's over 300 studies on this, and it's everything from helping you to maintain a healthy weight, uh, as I said, as it relates to diabetes and the metabolic syndrome, improving balance and core strength. And so there's literally, again, over 300 studies on the benefits of this form of fitness. As it relates to Parkinson's specifically, there are 19 studies and counting. And everything from, again, increased balance and stability, improved posture, increased core strengthening, walking tolerance, independence in daily activities, um, improved confidence, decreased stress, anxiety, and depression. So many areas are improved through this. And at the end of the day, as I said at the beginning, when you really think about this, how many activities can you do at any age or stage that are going to help you to engage nearly all your body's muscles simultaneously? And there really aren't that many. The other nice thing about this is that it is something, as you see in this picture here, um, it's a highly social activity. So, you know, if there are a few of you that can get out and sort of go together, um, you know, certainly one on one um, starting off is always the right way to go to ensure that you're set up for success. But even in seated, you know, programming, standing programming, there's so many ways to be able to leverage something like this. And the benefits are truly um, unlimited. This year, so as it relates to Parkinson's, I'm going to play this video again. This lady was actually shared with us by a physical therapist out of New Jersey. The physical therapist shared this video because she said, I was surprised myself. She said, I took your course. You told me that this was what was going to happen. And then I saw it with my own eyes, with my own um, patient and what a difference it made. And so I'm just going to play this now. You see when she's walking without the poles, she has next to no arm swing, basically none at all. And her, as we talked about before in that case study, you see it here, she has very, very limited stride length, right? She's very limited stuff. Whereas when she uses the poles, because she has the confidence of those two additional points of contact, she feels like she can step a little bit further because she's not worried as much about falling. And that's really what we see, you know, consistently is what is what the research supports as well. Balance, offloading, additional speed and strength by adding the poles. And I wanted to share this with you, as Tammy said, you know, the, there are lots and lots of poles out there, the same way that there's lots and lots of everything, let's be honest. At the end of the day, you want to make an informed decision. And that's why, you know, your Horizon House has chosen to have the training and certainly the poles, the activator poles um, for your use because they are superior in quality as we said at the very beginning, designed by an occupational therapist and gerontologist with your safety in mind. And the different features, and you can see it pretty quickly when you look at what other products are out there. And that's the vast majority. They kind of look like the pole you see on the left where it's a very thin handle. Oftentimes there's a strap. Um, you can see that they very often have a twist, sometimes a flip lock as well. Um, Oftentimes, you know, they don't have any tips at all, and that can create some pretty big issues, not just for balance, but also for anti-vibration features. Whereas the activators have the nice ergonomic handles. I know you have some there to show. Um, button lock system, flat base, numerous anti-vibration features, offloading, importantly, of 200 pounds per pole. So the really important thing is, is that when that button is in place, plus you have the added security of all that offloading. And at the end of the day, you're never offloading your whole weight into the poles. But with that button lock system, you can feel secure that that pole will not collapse on you. 
Whereas some of the poles where they're, they're on a twist or a flip lock system, um, some of those poles will actually uh, collapse with pressure. And it might not happen the first time, it might not happen the second time, but with repetitive use, this, this can happen because they weren't designed for an older adult market where they do need to have some, some offloading and weight bearing ability, whereas ours were. And so, you know, that really does speak to the unique difference in quality and what we bring to the table. And it all, again, stems through, and we talked about this before, but to tie it back in, and I know my time is running tight here, so I want to leave time for, for question and answer, um, but it's all through that core grip, because when you're pushing down, and I would really encourage you, before you even try and move with the poles, just stand you know, or sit, whatever you're comfortable with and, and whatever you're guided to do. And just take a moment and just gently push through the handles because what you're going to feel immediately is that core and upper body engagement. The other thing is you'll notice that our poles are strapless. And the reason for that is that the highest risk of injury, even though this is very safe, on the off chance you do happen to fall, you don't want to be strapped or stuck to the pole. Okay, it stands to reason if you fall, you don't want to be stuck to a metal rod. You want to be able to release that pole, which will happen with ours, versus the other ones when you're stuck to them, you're at a much higher risk of breaking something, whether it be a wrist or a thumb or, or something, because you're, you're stuck to it. So that's a very important design feature. Okay. Well, this is a great video because... What it showcases is that there's so many options when it comes to actually using the poles. Naturally, they were designed for walking, but this class right here, it's it's like a little pole dancing class. You know, they're they're moving to the beat, they're moving to the music, and the vast majority of the people in this class would not be able to perform any of these without having those two additional points of contact, right? If you feel unbalanced, your likelihood of lifting up one leg, even more than an inch, uh, would be very low. Versus when you have the two additional points of contact, suddenly you have that greater confidence and ability to be able to do some of these bigger movements that perhaps you wouldn't have been able to do prior to that. That's the really nice thing about it is that there really are countless options, seated, standing, social opportunities on your own. One on one certainly is, is the best way to start to, to have that assessment and understand um, what is right for you. But there are so, so many options to be able to improve balance, strength and stability through the Activator program. And I'm just so happy that your team chose to work with us and to take the training and to be able to bring this program to you because I think you will truly enjoy it. Um, and I'll just end with this video because this was another organization that actually started up the program. And as I said, it's always better to hear from the people that are you know, in it. And so I'm just gonna play this now. Or, there we go. Hello, my name is Nancy Kenton Kam. I'm a physical therapist assistant uh, working for Lutheran Senior Life Services. Um, I came across poles a couple years ago uh, when I took the class. I fell in love with the poles. I use it myself personally as an athlete and also for uh, as a uh, physical therapist assistant. I can see the result right away. I work with the patient. I'm using it. I was able to work with the posture, with the balance, and strengthening at the same time. Uh, I have a patient that I use, uh, that I work with. He was a, a walker user. Um, I worked with him to the point where he was able to walk without the, uh, the walker. I still currently work with him once a week um, to use the poles for exercises to maintain what he has. Uh, I use the pole for the uh, seated exercises. I can see that if Patients, they can feel more confident with it because of the poles and the extra two points um, that they have. 
As an athlete, I use this for cross training. I use it for walking and for hiking. For walking, I can see the difference that I'm using more of my upper body. I can see that I propel myself forward more because of the poles helping me push forward. I can see the uh, my heart rate increase more. Uh, I compare it to walking without the poles and walk with the poles. I can see the difference of 20 or 30 percent increase in my heart rate. I use it for hiking, use it for balance. I can see that uh, I'm able to look up more. It helps me to go up hills better and come down uh, the hills better. It helps me with my balance. And, and again, I, I love these poles. I'm passionate about it. I'm looking forward to teach the class here at Lutheran Senior Life. <laughs> I, I like these poles a lot. Uh, it helps me to stand up more vertically and I walk faster. At least people tell me that when I'm using them. And these hand rests are really nice. I've got other walking poles that I've used in foreign countries and they don't have the uh, cushion here for the hand. So that makes them extra nice. That's it. That's it. I love how he ends it. <laughs> so just to say, you know, thank you again. Thank, thanks to all of you for, um, for having me with you today. And I'm very happy to answer questions. And what I'll do now is I will um, mute myself to avoid the feedback and then just um, we'll wait for, for your questions. Thank you again. Okay, so we're going to take some questions, but if you have questions that are specific to me and specific to what Horizon House is going to do, we will save that until after Deanna leaves. So if you have questions specifically about what you just heard, and we do have a question. I have two questions. Uh, do they hold up short for travel? And then how about on stairs? So the question is, do they shorten up if you want to travel and uh, the use of stairs? Using them on stairs. Okay, great question. So there's a few different types. Um, I believe that the one, all of the ones that you have are the activators. Um, so they look like this. They've got the red and silver and they are a two sectional pole, right? So these will travel, I've done it many times, in a large size suitcase. Oftentimes you take off the bell-shaped tip and they will go in on an angle, but they will go in, okay? When we talk about travel, you should also know that airlines will deem these to be aids to mobility if you walk in with them. So if you take them with you on the flight, we also carry, you know, carry bags. So on the flight, you could just kind of pop them in the carry bag, put them up in the in the luggage compartment, but if you walk in with them, you know, they won't question them at all. But yes, to your to your point, they will. So the activator twos will go into a large size suitcase on an angle. I'm sorry, the activators. The activator twos, which I think I'll just scroll back a moment here. I'll just show you a photo of what they look like because they were a little bit of a ways back here. Let me see here. Um, oh, he's got them right there. So the gentleman in this photo here, those activator twos, they are three sectional poles. So you notice there's two on that pole on the left. Uh, there's two of those black ferrules. There's also two um, locking mechanisms. So there's a button lock and a flip lock. And those collapse down shorter, about 25% shorter than the standard activator, which is the pole you see um, that red and silver one there. Okay, so the activator two does collapse down shorter. It'll go into a smaller size suitcase. And it's also recommended for people that are six feet and over. Six one, depends on your proportions. So you'd have to be measured. Um, but that's, that's the first question. The second question about stairs is a bit tricky. Um, I would say that you would have to be, you know, a very confident uh, user to use them going up the stairs. Down the stairs, I would say, you know, not, not as advisable. Um, 
you know, what, what many people will do is if there is a, a handlebar or something they can hold on to, you know, they will kind of use um, their, their handlebar and they'll sort of have the other poles in both hands as a support, but they're still got that, that extra added step of the, of the handlebar. Um, but, you know, steps are tricky. If you're going to do it as part of an exercise program, like for example, going up a step and down a step, up a step and down a step, that's a different story. And again, under the advice of certainly a health and wellness professional is always the way to go with respect to that. But thank you for those questions. Let me know if there's any others. I'm gonna mute myself again. Another question? I'm looking for questions that maybe um, Deanna can answer better, better than I can answer. No? I think we're good, Deanna. <laughs> I don't quite know where this stands. <laughs> I think we're good, Deanna. We don't have any more questions. No? I want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for coming out and not you guys, right yet, Deanna, for spending time with us. And um, yeah, give, give her a round of applause. She shared a lot of information with us today. Thank, thank you so much, all of you. I really, really you have a wrap up having you, Deanna. Thank you again. I really appreciate you having me, and I'm happy to do this. You know, again, if you'd like to to invite me back. We can always talk about something new and different. And um, I really hope that you enjoy the program. Certainly you're in great hands. And please do share, you know, share with us because we love hearing how everybody's doing. So thanks again. And um, I'm just going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to leave the meeting now and that way you can continue. Thank you. to wait to her. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to get back to you, Joyce. I'm going to answer your question again. Can you remind me what it is? <laughs> oh, so that's going to be based on each individual person. But when we there, we have two different sticks. But when we are talking about the activator poles, when we are talking about the activator poles, they are going to be at 90 degrees for the activator poles. So can do I need to use this microphone? Yes. 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 Yeah. For those of you that don't know me, my voice does carry well. But for the recording. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I can't use two poles at one time and hold a microphone as talented as I think I, I like to be. <laughs> so um, I'm going to talk to you about two different programs that we are going to be offering. And one of the, oh, Joyce, your question before I talk about oh, well, Mom, let's do the Okay, we'll get to that one. <laughs> um, two different programs that we will be offering. One will be strictly for the activator polls. And this is for people who are looking to be more mobile, people who are looking to find more stability, and as uh, Deanna expressed in the beginning, for people who are, who are um, potentially are able to move away from using their walkers and or avoid using a walker. And that's what these are for. And we'll, we, I will be offering a small class setting of three to four people, and these poles will be the only poles that we use for the activator class. So remember, there are two different things I'm going to be offering. But when it comes to the category of people I just talked about, we're using these. And the reason that we're using them are all the things that Deanna already talked about. One, there are three vibrational, they absorb the vibration from down at that bell tip, up to here, up to the, up to the ledge. So there it is absorbing energy. So less vibration with each step you take. It's not going to reverberate for your body as much. It also has, the, they call it the core grip. I think they need to rename it because you don't want to grip 
whiten up old grip. They have this ledge here, and your hand is just going to naturally have this press down, which is engaging the core, your abdominals, your back, and it helps it helps lessen fatigue as well. Um, using whether you're using those poles over there, which I'll get to, or these, it does take a while to tra to transition into them because you are using a lot more muscle activity than you are when you are just walking without the poles. You are engaging your abdominals, your back, your shoulders, your arms. So um, you are getting way more bang for your buck and a lot more strength. Um, I was working with Molly, whose last name I don't remember, yesterday. I just met her and uh, she was using one. She has the poles. She was using one because she had a hand issue. She forgot that she had a ledge. <laughs> so she walked out using two, and there was a greater point to that than that moment right there. I had something else I wanted to say about, oh, the grip. Um, so she had her hand in a splint and was still able to use this because it is not designed to grip. It is designed for you to stay neutral through your, through your wrist and have an easier grip because the motion is going to, oh, the motion is going to come from your back and your shoulders. She was talking to me about she has no flexibility. Well, she will when she keeps using the poles because you have to walk with your shoulders moving. So there's a lot of engagement. So the class for specifically those looking for mobility, stability, better gait, better posture, um, we will be using the activator poles and we get the professional rate. So they are $74 and you will buy them through us and we buy them through them. So there's no middleman. There's just, there's just us. There's just Horizon House and them and we can buy them in bulk and that's why you can pay a, a better price for that. And um, they come rather quickly. So when we order, it takes less than the five business days to get here. Um, so that is this course. It will be a four week course starting in June. And I do have handouts right here. Four week course that meets twice a week, depending on how many people are interested, we'll decide on um, the time of the day. That's specifically for these. Um, and then of course you can always work with me after that. It's just to get, to get you started, get you moving indoors and outdoors. And like you saw the class on there, the pole dancing class, um, we will start with some kind of fun warm ups and some cool downs because again, it, it, it's, it takes a while to get used to them and your brain's gonna be working hard. And when your brain works hard, that means your body's working hard too. So you can hit that level of information overload. The second class I am not gonna be as picky about but I would highly suggest the urban poles because again, oh, let me go back with my three arms. Actually, Anne, where are you, Anne? Anne, can you come up front? <laughs> Anne's got two arms. <laughs> and Anne's been using the activator poles. I won't make you walk. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to have Anne stand here and face the mirror. So when you use the activator poles, these poles are always going to be, you can hold it. These poles are always going to be in front of you. They are always going to remain vertical. That's one of the key components of using the activator poles to feel like you have that sense of do you feel like you have that sense of four legs? <laughs> oh, we're good. Okay, thank you. Do you feel like you have that sense of four legs? And so it is hard to not want to have this slant thing going on, but Ann and I are working on it. <laughs> and the arm will maintain itself at a 90 degree level. And her hand is able to rest down on there so that you don't have to, none of this is, none of this is going on. It's, I'm not going to have Anne move, put her on the spot, but it comes from the shoulders when you walk. It comes from the comes from the upper body, just like that, except without it without it swerving. It's going to stay straight. Thank you, Anne. Mm -hmm. All right, so that that is the activator poles, and they come. We keep looking. I keep looking at it because there's a big R on it and a big L. 
So you just rewind it which hand, but it's going to stay in front. And my shoulders are going to propel, I should say my upper back is going to propel it. Oh, and um, here's the, lock, the locking me mechanism. It's kind of small for you all to see, but there's that little dot there. So it is guided into the holes, which keeps a little dot. There's like a belly button sticking out. And what's nice about these is that it does lock in place. When it comes to the kind that needs to twist, and I had this conversation with someone the other day, not only could they not twist all the way, but they're metal. And so if you're inside with your metal poles and you want to go outside in the winter, and 15 minutes into it, your poles feel loose, that's because metal condenses and contracts. So if you are going to go outside in the cold, you want to put your poles outside for 10 to 15 minutes or someplace where the temperature is cooler so that when you go to use them, you can adjust these right away. You don't have to worry about that when it comes to the, to the activated poles. These are, these are the urban pollen poles, the kind that um, you can take out on hikes, you can take out on the trails, you can take outside. They have booties on the end and they look like little baby booties. Um, and these poles are always behind you. They are not meant to be in the front. They, I can't do, they don't work on this floor. I could do it out there and with my other arm. But you have that action of a low handshake. So, very different. I know some of you are more curious about these, and um, there seems to be an interest in going urban walking together. And Erica, our social worker down there, Erica, is very interested in getting something going again. I'm not as picky about what pole you use. I, I would suggest, though, that you don't use the strap, because if you fall and you're strapped in and you go down, that space between the webbing between your thumb and your forefinger can get sprained, strained, broken thumb. Cross country. Cross country. And we have a witness to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that we actually have a witness to that. Lots of rehab. Oh, so yeah. Hand stuff just takes forever. So those are the two classes that we will be offering. And I don't know what these ones cost because we didn't buy them in bulk yet. Um, but we can. So, with that, questions. Most of you know that I'm not walking outside, so would that be the second poll? Um, are you, I have a kind of REI hiking poll. Can you repeat the question? I will let her let, let her rephrase it again. It's kind of a two part. I'm not the very horse. I'm sorry. You guys tell. I'll say it again for you. Uh, well, I like to walk outside, and I have an REI. Right. Which one of these? Well, are you walking for stability and mobility? Exercise. Exercise. Either one's going to work, but you just need to use it properly. But from the way that I see you gesturing, I would go with these. Are you offering any instructions for people who already have a set of poles? These are REI's top of the line walking poles. And so I would not be interested in buying a new set. Yes. So, oh. <laughs> and Sherry's, Sherry's husband, Jim, is always telling me to put a chair behind me. So I don't walk into things. <laughs> Where is he now when I need him? Um, when I offer the activator class, I'm going to be teaching with the activator poles, period. For safety. If you want to work with me one on one, I'll do that. Um, when it comes to the urban walking, if you want to like be a part of that walking, hiking, wherever we walk club, yes, use yours. And yes, I will um, be talking about how everyone can use the poles. But Different poles are designed for different things. So we just have to make sure that when we do the urban hiking one, some people might have the poles that go in front of them. Some people might have the poles that go behind them. So it's, it's a yes and a no. For the strictly the activator, I'm gonna, I'm 
putting my foot down on that one just because of the design, the stability for people that need that stability. Um, it, it's a sound piece of equipment, and um, but for the other class, it's, it's much more open. So I pulled three head of tarsals and I'm in rehab and I'm a fall risk. My balance is uh, just not there yet. So is it too early to try the pulls? Say it was my walker or? That, that would be a conversation we could have with Divya. I mean, like the three of us could have with Divya. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't want to make that call. <laughs> but yes, good question. Do I have to have a doctor's referral to, to come to you or to, to even consider that? You do not necessarily need a doctor's referral unless there is something going on that you are particularly concerned about and something that maybe I should be concerned about or talking with Vivian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you might remember that it snowed last year. <laughs> the sidewalks were clear, but the cross streets were icy. Mm -hmm. I needed my old traveling pole. But so for someone who is mobile, but at risk for falling, mm -hmm. but still wants to go out, do, is there something that changes in the bottom? Yeah, that? so both of these poles have different, can have different bottoms, and they're called a snow basket, and they're a little bit wider. Um, for ice, um, I'd have to get back to you on what to use with ice. Um, you don't. I, yeah, you don't really. But um, these, however, these, however, the bell-shaped ones, you're planting down. So you are never going like that. You're never going like that with the pole, which on ice would be deadly, right? You are planting. Um, but for snow and for the beach, they do have a different um, basket. Uh, it's called a it's called a snow basket that goes on on the bottom, so that you can actually trek in the beach and in the snow and not sink down. So it, um, yeah, and these these tips, depending on how often you use your poles, um, do wear down, and it is something again that we can we can order for you or you can. Um, but we can like to help you out as much as we can with that. Yes. Is there going to be a charge for the class that you give? No. Nope. No charge. The only charge is just, just buying the poles. Yeah. So Deborah, if I wanted to try the outdoor trekking class, could I try it with my hiking poles? Mm-hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, we are just going to make sure that you are using them properly. What I see a lot around here, I call it walking. I call it walking the poles. Oh yeah, I see that. It's like um, you really don't need it, <laughs> but when you do have them and you use it properly, you can get stronger. You can get more flexible. Your pot, you can feel like you've grown back two inches that you may feel like you have lost. Um, just because you're going to build up that strength again to lengthen yourself and walk posturally better for yourself. And when, you, when you're posturally walking better and sitting better, you're breathing better because your organs aren't being compressed. So yes, yeah, everybody <laughs> adjusts their shoulders, right? It makes a huge difference, not just um, not just with walking, but just in how your internal organs can function with space. Yeah. Good. Any last questions? For those of us who have other poles already, <laughs> is is it always a ninety degree angle? Also, I'm going to need I'm going to need to see your poles. Yeah, so you can always bring them down, ask me. We could always mm -hmm. set up a time to use them properly. Mm -hmm. Gee. Maybe that, that may answer my question already, but you, because I was in New Zealand with my sister, and she had a Nordic walking group that went, and so I borrowed there and I was mm -hmm. learning to do it. Um, but um, 
but only two brands that you know of plus REI is a brand? Uh, there are many brands out there, but what I, again, just goes back to what I really like is how it, this one was designed and, and how it supports the body, how it supports the wrist. And that she talked about that action of the hand here, which is very different than you just gripping. There's no core action in me just gripping this right now. But when my hand comes down on that ledge, I can feel my arms and I can feel my abdominals kicking in. Just standing still, I don't feel anything. But as soon as my hand comes to that ledge, there's an activation through my body. So I have issues with both hands, which is one reason I need to stop trying to use any kind of walking sticks. Right. So I'm just curious if there's a chance to come and just practice holding. You can. And remember, it's not about my hands and it's not about my arm. So yes, it would take time to get used to it. And yes, I encourage you to come down and just check them out and hold them from the back so that I can keep Instead of white knuckling it to hold on to it, I got a ledge for support and I'm using my upper body. Yeah, yeah. Good question. One more. So, if we want to take the class, do we have our own poles or do we take it against the side? Say that again. Well, if you want to take the class. Yeah, but I mean, should we have our poles already? Oh, poles yeah. Already? If you're interested in taking the activator class, let me know or let Ryan know, whoever you see first. I, I have, since I said the groups are going to be small, um, three to four people, I have five polls right now, but it just say there are 10 of you who are interested or you know other people who are interested because some people who are in here are interested. Um, I just need to order the polls and then we will have them for you before I teach in June, for sure. Yeah. All right. Yes. So yeah, when you're when you're heading out, you can just say, yeah, put my name on the list. All right, thank you, and thank you to our fabulous tech crew back there. You're awesome. Thank you, thank you.